All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, and welcome to my May 2019 update video, part two. So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, I'm gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube stuff. So let's just jump right into it. And I gave you guys a little up date on Instagram last night that was very well received. I wanna thank you guys for all the really nice comments you gave me last night involving that post. So we're just gonna kinda go over some things involving it and maybe elaborate on some other things. So you know how these update videos go. So in any event, um, the main thing that's gonna be coming up here for me shortly is school. So for the first time since the end of 2017, I'm gonna be starting up college again. So I'm very excited about it. Um, my classes start in less than two weeks, the time it's recording. So I'm very excited about all that. Can't wait to start. And the fun thing is, most of them are online. So I don't even have to actually go to the campus um, all that often. I only have to go like twice a week. So that's pretty nice. Allow me to still continue to do freelance work and balance out school and all that fun stuff. Of course, you know, depending on the workload involved, I might have to come back on some freelance projects because for me, once school starts, that's my number one priority because I'm gonna go as hard as I can at school, especially this semester, because that's going to be what I use to apply to the school that I want to go out to in Japan. Now, I don't want to name the school just yet because, you know, it might be bad luck to call, call my shot this early, but also, you know, they haven't accepted me yet, I haven't even applied to them yet, so, like, it's kind of presumptuous of me to even name drop them until, you know, after I've been accepted and all that stuff, so, yeah. but. I will give you a hint. It is out in Tokyo. It is an English speaking university, so pretty easy to put uh, two and two together, if, uh, if I do say so myself. So, but in any event, um, this semester, I'm gonna be going as hard as I can on my grades and just focus as much as I can on that and try to manage my freelance projects as best I can. But, you know, for these next two months, I'm gonna be going all out on school to get the best GPA that I can. So that way, when the grades are finalized and I send my results to the school I wanna to apply to in Tokyo, then I have the best possible shot of getting in. I mean, granted, they will look at my previous um, universities, GPAs and stuff like that, but they'll see that, okay, he took a little break here. He's doing really good now, so I'll have a better shot at getting in. And uh, the plan is to um, move out to Tokyo at the end of 2019, or maybe like very early 2020, depending on when I can get uh, tickets and stuff. So we'll just have to schedule that out when it comes to it, but it's around that time period, we'll say. And uh, plan on starting at uh, the beginning of 2020 in Tokyo, Japan. And it'll be the first time in five years that I'll be back in Japan. And, you know, as you guys know, since moving back to the States, I haven't had the best of luck with things. And, you know, before I blamed it on other circumstances outside of myself. And yeah, there were some things that, you know, were outside of my control that kind of hindered me a little bit. But ultimately, it was my own decisions that um, sabotaged my chances of, of success. So, you know, I took this time off from school to really think about what I want to do and I want to go back to Japan. You know, I don't want to put it off anymore because I feel like the longer I put it off, the further away Japan's gonna get. You know, even though all my expat friends are like, Japan will always be there, Japan will still be here. You know, for me, the longer I put it off, you know, it's gonna be harder for me to get back. And even when I do get back, you know, all the hype and stuff that I've built up around it, it's not going to live up to that, you know? But I think now is a good time to come back because, you know, I've been away for about five years and, you know, I've gone and learned so many different things, not just about videography and editing and all that stuff, which that alone is phenomenal, 
but I've also learned a lot about myself and just kind of how to balance things a lot better. You know, I learned a lot from, from my mistakes, from going back to college as a 30 something, trying to readjust to, to civilian life again, and then readjust to American life again. And as you guys know, I've gone through so many different roadblocks and, you know, gone through so many different uh, dips during this five year stay in America. And, you know, I feel like I'm in a really good place right now. You know, I got my freelance stuff going good. I'm gonna be starting up school here in a couple weeks. You know, I got um, better local support. So if things start to get a little hairy, you know, I can always count on my family to, uh, to help me out. You know, if anything, just, you know, be there to listen to me complain about stuff. But uh, I'm trying to, you know, keep a very positive attitude about things because I noticed that negativity really is one of the things that pulls me down like really fast. So I'm just trying to eliminate the negative mindset um, and just try to focus more on positive aspects. You know, as some people may say, positive mental attitude, basically. So that I think is going to be uh, paramount to my success moving forward, not just in Japan, but in my career as well. And that's another thing, that's another reason why I wanna move back to Japan is to um, build up my editing career and just to build something out of it, you know? Like, you know, work with so many people that I want to work with, you know, people who've, you know, I've become friends with, I've come in contact with, you know, both while I was in Japan and even after I've left. You know, there's a lot of people out there I want to work with and work with hands-on instead of just being some guy shouting instructions thousands of miles away in America, you know. And also, aside from that, I want to get back to making anti Japani videos because even though compared to uh, my other videos, they aren't the most highly viewed videos, but they were the most fun for me to make. And, you know, I look back on those and you know, they do look kind of dated because, you know, I wasn't super focused on good editing or storytelling or anything like that. And I was basically allergic to B-roll <laughs> at that time. So a lot of it was either pointing the camera in my face, and say, hey guys, this is Andy san here and we're going to this place in Tokyo. Okay, see you in the next bit. Turn the camera around. Okay, here we are. And, you know, I tried different things and... You know, some of it was okay, a lot of it didn't work, but you know, without that experimentation, I wouldn't have gotten to where I am now and focused more on improving my game. Like, speaking of game, the one thing that really improved my overall video quality, I think, was my Andy Cade series. You know, because before I started that up, I studied um, different like recording setups and how to get your voice to sound like really good for voiceover. And you know, working with OBS, which is what I'm using to record this video on. So I just learned a lot, even though the Andy Kate series wasn't really all that successful. And I wasn't really all that good at being a Let's Player, to be honest. Um, but I learned a lot from the experience and I've taken what I've learned from that series and incorporated it into my following videos. And I think once I get, you know, the chance to make the videos that I want to make again, I think this channel will really start to come into its own. Because I feel like, you know, since moving back to America, this channel really hasn't been the same. You know, I just, you know, and that's mostly due to lack of money and, you know, I just feel weird vlogging in America. You know, I worry about people either approaching me or, you know, wanting to steal my stuff because it might be a little expensive and, you know, it's just, there's a lot of safety concerns for me when it involves shooting outside. So, you know, that's why I haven't really done it all that often since coming back to the States. Now, when I was out in Ohio, I was in the middle of pretty much nowhere. So, you know, it wasn't too hard to uh, vlog outside. But after a while, it just kind of became like, seeing the same scenes, shooting the same pictures, it just kinda got a little a little boring, to be honest. So, 
that's why you know I just felt like once I got back to the States my creativity started to stagnate and while behind the scenes I was learning more things with like video editing and starting that up you know I felt like my own videos suffered because of it and I think going back to Japan and getting back into that creative mindset and more importantly into the creative environment is going to significantly improve not only the quality of my own videos but also my freelance projects for my clients as well and to be able to put those skills that I've learned to the test is going to be tremendous for me so that's why I want to move back to Japan now that being said I know some people are gonna be wondering like well Andy you know once you move out to Japan do you have any plans of like staying in Japan long term are you gonna die in Japan and you know for me I'm like hopefully not <laughs> but uh, you know if it happens it happens but uh, you know I do want to stay in Japan long term but I do realize that the career that I want to go into isn't really supported out in Japan uh, for foreigners anyway um, it's not impossible to do I know plenty of foreigners out there who have had a really nice They've carved out a nice little niche for themselves in the entertainment industry in Japan, and they're doing very well. So it is definitely possible, but you know, I also got to think a bit more realistically as well. So what if that doesn't happen for me? You know, um, there is the possibility of moving back to America, but I would only realistically move back to America if either something happened at home, with my family. Or if I got like a really good job opportunity that I just could not pass up. And you know, one of the possibilities would be to move out to LA. And I know I've talked about this before in other videos as well, but you know, right now it's just not <laughs> a really good possibility for me to to do that because I just don't have the money for it. I don't have the connection base in LA and you know I don't have the solid portfolio that I need to even entertain the idea of working out in LA at this time but that is definitely something I do want to do in the long-term future is you know do something out in LA um, and I think long term again that's probably what I'll end up doing but you know for now I do want to go back to Japan stay as long as I can build up that portfolio and you know when the time comes that I got a solid portfolio got some interest in bringing me on to certain projects that pay extremely well you know who's to say I couldn't move out to LA or even like fly out to LA for a couple weeks to shoot something or whatever you know because that's the nice nice thing about uh, the West Coast is that it's very easy to get tickets and they're comparatively cheaper than uh, if I were to fly back and forth, you know, to Ohio or wherever. So, you know, that's a possibility as well. But I'm just keeping my options open at this point because right now it's just uh, future speculation and stuff. And, you know, that's kind of where I see myself going is, you know, I want to show more of Japan, make videos of the places that I love and talk about things and meet people who are also interested in Japan and just kind of going forward from there, you know. So as far as, you know, classes and things like that, you know, especially right now, once I start class in a couple weeks, um, that's going to be my main priority. So you're probably not going to see too many videos from me. Um, I'll try to update as, as much as I can, maybe do some live streams or something like that, which I have been doing more of um, while I'm editing videos and stuff, so you guys seem to be enjoying those as well, which is nice. Um, as far as making it a regular thing, I, I'm not really sure, because, you know, it just depends on the level of work, and, you know, for me, editing and paying attention to a stream at the same time can get a little taxing, so if it's like super intense editing work that I have to like really focus on, you know, it's kind of difficult for me to stream that. Or, you know, if it's just a day where the dogs are barking like crazy and, 
you know, all this other stuff's going on, or maybe I don't have the right energy to, you know, do both at the same time, then probably not a good day for me to stream. So that just kinda, kinda is what it is. And, you know, right now, you know, I don't really have a set schedule, as you guys know. So it's hard for me to say, yeah, tune in Wednesdays at 8 p.m. or something like that. And um, I'm hoping once I get out to Japan, get back into a rhythm and a flow with uh, making my own videos, making videos for others, and just doing my thing, then we'll get back into the scheduling flow that I had back when I was stationed out in Japan. Because, like, I had it down, man. Like, usually what I do is during the weekends, if I didn't have duty, I would go out to Tokyo or Yokohama or wherever and shoot the video. I do all my shooting on the weekends and then I would spend the rest of the week editing the video. And sometimes it would only take like a day. Others where it's like a lot of different footage and stuff would take a bit longer. But I would do like all my editing and all that stuff during the week, all my sh shooting during the weekend. So I had a nice nice rhythm and flow going and I would like you know write down different places that I want to go to you know I'd look at other people's videos and be like oh, I want to go to that place too and you know that's that was my MO from when I first got out there but I think now that there's so many people out there making videos in Japan uh, one of the things I want to do to differentiate myself is to shoot at locations that aren't really all that covered uh, in most videos, you know, obviously you got the the touristy spots in Tokyo. You know, you got Harajuku, Shinjuku, Shibuya, um, Akihabara, all that stuff, which I definitely do want to make videos of. But you know, I also want to include some more like off the beaten path type places. And even if they don't get a lot of views, you know, for people that are looking for them, I want it to be like the top video. So. Um, there was a saying that uh, I was watching this uh, the series on Netflix called um, I think it was called Street Food, and I was watching the Osaka episode. And this one guy who started in kind of an outdoor izakaya, he said, "You should always strive to be the head of a chicken rather than the tail of a bull." And what that means is it's best to be in charge of something small than just be you know, a small part of something big. And I really resonated with that. And I think, you know, for me, I definitely want to do my own thing. And I like the concept of freelancing because it allows me to be, you know, autonomous. Um, you know, the client just gives me their stuff. They may have some directions as far as what they want the video to be or what they want to showcase or, you know, take this part out, don't shoot that or color correct that or, you know, whatever. It all depends on the client, really. Some are more hands-on than others. Uh, but for the most part, I'm just sitting here from my computer, you know, sipping on some tea, sipping on some water, whatever, you know, putting these videos together. I don't have to worry about people looking over my shoulder and be like, yeah, I'm gonna need you to color correct that differently, okay? Thanks. <laughs> you know, I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. I just do my thing. And um, also, speaking of computers, uh, this is kind of a, you know, whatever. But uh, once I start up school, um, financially, how things are going to work out is um, obviously saving up for Japan is the highest priority. You know, getting plane ticket money having a nice little nest egg uh, so I have something to live off of until the GI Bill kicks in as well as have some emergency funds set up so if something were to happen or if like the GI Bill was a little short that month you know I'm not scrambling around to pay my bills or scramble around to eat something or whatever so I'm um, taken care of and that's why you know I want to wait until the beginning of 2020 to go out to Japan rather than the fall because I'll have more time to save up, more time to get better grades. So in the event that, you know, they don't accept my awesome summer grades, you know, I can apply the following semester and just kind of keep going from there basically. So 
Um, but yeah, there are some things that I do need to buy in order to, you know, really function out in Japan. And the main thing is a laptop. Now, I love my desktop computer. I uh, built it back in 2015, so it's about five years old now. And even still, it's just a fucking beast. I have no problem playing any of the modern games. Editing is just effortless, basically. Unless I get into uh, 4K, it does struggle a little bit with 4K, but if you set it up just right, you know, put up proxies or, you know, whatever the case, then it is definitely doable, but uh, it does struggle a bit with it, so. Uh, but that aside, you know, something like this is kind of hard to fit in a suitcase. So, as much as I love it, um, it's just easier for me uh, to have a laptop. So I'm looking into buying a laptop on Amazon. And the nice thing is uh, some laptops have a five month payment program. So um, for me, you know, as I'm plugging away at classes, collecting that BAH, you know, I can just get the laptop, pay on it monthly, and uh, in five months I'll have it. So that's nice. Um, and as far as other things I want to get, um, it would be nice if I got the, uh, the new Sony A6400. That's the camera I really want to get for shooting those really awesome anti japan videos. Last year I sold my Sony A5100 camera. Um, had to sell it to pay some bills, fix the car, all that fun stuff, you know. But I ended up selling it and I love that camera and I was looking at all the videos about the A6400 and there are some drawbacks but for my own purposes I couldn't think of a better camera you know it's got the uh, the shooting power autofocus it's got the flip up screen which is the important thing and you know as far as like adjust to having like an external mic or something like that with it there's definitely ways around it you can get the little cage which is probably what I'm gonna get I also saw recently uh, some company put out kind of a mini attachment that allows you to like you know have the little, the little cold shoe mount like in different positions so it's not just like in the center that the sony one has so that's also a possibility uh but the point being is i definitely at least want the camera and you know make some really high quality 4k videos so i definitely want to move up to 4k for the outside videos now for these Inside ones where I'm just, you know, in my room or whatever, you know, 10 APs, fine. <laughs> I don't have to worry about that. But if I'm doing outside Andy Japandi stuff, definitely want to do 4K for sure. So, yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about in this uh, long winded Ubi Date video. Um, once again, I just want to thank you guys for tuning into th this video, watching my other stuff, and, you know, just supporting me through this through this time because I know um, especially with my low video output it's kind of hard and you know I've been working doing other things and you know especially in this day and age on YouTube where you know if you don't post regularly you're considered relevant but uh, that's about to change so uh, be on the lookout for Andy Japandi season 2 2020 baby so with that said guys this is the andy sign sign for now and as always we'll see you next time catch you later guys bye